Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is part nine of course on building Electron apps with JavaScript. Today I want to talk about packaging. Uh, if you watched my live stream, you know that I had a bit of a problems uh, setting this whole packaging thing up, but I figured most of them out. I'm going to tell you right now what are the problems, how to evade them, and you know what do you do in general. So let's start by talking about why we need packaging in the first place. Like if you take our entry point, which is in XHTML, you can see that we already load a bunch of uh, styles and scripts in using script tags, right? In this case, we don't have to care much about uh, loading times and round trip times and all that kind of stuff because we're loading directly from the hard drive. So this is not an issue. On the other hand, parsing and executing those files is an issue and takes time. So while those, you know, like uh, Fond Awesome, Bulma, VideoJS, whatever, they are pretty small libraries, our app itself can be quite huge because of all the things that it actually requires, right? So we don't really wanna, uh, I mean, you can just leave the Babel register and source, like required source index here, and it will work perfectly fine. The problem is uh, it will take a lot of time, to, like a lot of time is rel relative, but depending on the user config, it can take quite significant time to even start the application and show him something. We obviously want to make it as fast as possible. That's why I think it's important to package it into something uh, that is quickly parsable. So in this case, we package it into dist app min.js, which is minified, uglified, and all that kind of stuff. To do that, we're going to use the rollup JS, uh, which is a pretty nice bundler. It's quite small, quite fast. It's ES6 only, so it has the tree shaking and all that kind of stuff. It's way easier to set up and way simpler, I think, in a way it works than Webpack because it doesn't support all this like crazy plugins. Uh, and uh, again, you know, the simplicity of setup is what basically bought me. I've used it on uh, multiple tiny libraries that I've did. So for libraries, it's perfect. With um, Electron, it's a bit trickier, but still works quite fine. So here's a config. So we use, um, again, you know, the config is very straightforward, very simple. We have the entry point, which is our index file. We have the format, which is common JS in this case, because it's an Electron app. We have the destination file, which is DS app JS has already set. We have a list of plugins, which I already defined. So we have the Babel preprocessor. We have Uglyfy, uh, which will compress the thing with additional things. So I, I, as you can see here, I put it Minify from Uglyfy ES. This is a ES6 compatible uglification um, algorithm that basically works better on the code that we have. And then I have this big bunch of uh, modules. I mean, you can actually remove them. They are not mandatory here, but it's better to have them because you will see less warnings from uh, Rollup because Rollup will complain if you uh, try to import packages that are considered to be external. So it's better to just say, you know, this, those are the external packages. So please don't complain about them, right? That's actually it. That's all you need to set it up. Very straightforward. And uh, build is very simple. You just say roll up minus C. So if we go to the console now, uh, let me increase the size here. And if I just do uh, npm run build, you'll see it will execute it. Uh, there are some warnings about the ambiguous behavior from uh, Electron 1.6, but this is fine. I think we can tweak it later. Uh, which is, I mean, again, it's, you know, it's not a major thing. I don't think there is any breaking uh, changes here. Uh, so this gets us, uh, let me open it, uh, dist admin.js, so this file, um, and I can increase and let's talk about wrap. So as you can see, it's, you know, it's not a big, so this is our whole app without any dependencies, right? So all the dependencies will be required in a normal Node.js way and work pretty fine. So, but our app is now super tiny. It's just one file without any like need to resolve and walk the tree and everything. Um, this is not what I want. Okay, and um, yeah, so we minified it. The next step is to actually package it, right? So there is a thing called Electron Packager. Uh, and uh, this is actually a user land Electron Package, as you can see here, this is hosted on a separate repo. Basically, this packager allows you to bundle your Electron app into an OS-specific bundle. Yeah, .app on macOS, .exe on uh, Windows, or you know any Linux binaries, whatever you can imagine. It works in a very simple way. You just install it as a dev dependency, or if you like globally, if you know if you work frequently with uh, Electron apps, and then you just say Electron app um, packager source dear app name specify platform architecture optionally and then give some flags. So in this case, I created the package uh, script in NPM, NPM script uh, called package. And as you can see here, I package it as BBGS Electron. And uh, in this case, I limited it only for uh, macOS, 64-bit macOS. 
and I said that I want to override the results anytime I run it. So there is a caveat though. So if we run this npm run package, I am currently running the latest npm. Uh, if I updated that, I believe I did. So this should fail. And that took me like half an hour on the stream to like just look at it and be like, oh, why is it failing? So it fails to execute this npm run production command, right? So what that does is that it removes all non-production uh, packages, which is this Babel core, Electron, Spectron, whatever, all these huge dependencies that we don't really need in production, right? And what I found out like when digging around on my own is that actually npm 5 is broken like literally broken. So there is this uh, npm prune production fails on npm 5.3, but that's not the whole story. It's not just so on 5.3 it will fail, but if you install 5.2, it will prune the wrong packages. So it will actually remove the ones that you need instead of the ones that you don't need. So the only solution I found that is working is do this, npm install uh, minus g npm 4. So once you install npm 4, which was pre, uh, so the pre package log and npm 5, you know, the smart tree like yarn like functionality essentially, it starts working. And if we run npm run build right now, uh, sorry, not build, uh, package, yeah, come on. If we run package now, you will actually see that it will compile it successfully and we'll actually be able to run it and it will execute. Because if you do exactly the same on npm 5.2 or 5.1 or 5.0, I think I've tried 5.2 and 5.1 at least, haven't tried 5.0, maybe should, uh, they will fail because it will compile. But once you open this uh, Darwin package and once you try to run your app, it will actually not. So in this case, it loads, you know, this is this is what you expect to see, right? This is our app. This is what you want to see. This is like everything working. You can click on everything. Everything loads as expected. With uh, running it with npm5 will fail and you will it will build, but when you run this, you will actually see just a blank screen, which is kind of like bonkers. And, and it will fail because half of the packages that are imported from here using the links and scripts won't be there. I don't know why. It's like, it's just npm5 is kind of broken right now. So um, an option is not to use npm5 as I just did now, or you can also say uh, no prune as I had it in a previous comment, which won't remove the dev dependencies. The problem with it is that your binary will become like 50 megabytes larger because you will have electron inside of electron and then you will have spectron inside of electron and that is not a very nice solution basically, right? Okay, so that is actually it for packaging. Again, you know, you can tweak platform and architecture for your own platform and try to build it. Uh, it should work without any problems. Bear in mind that, you know, you have the uh, latest, no, not the later, not the latest NPM, but the NPM four, because like with five, you, if you want to keep it, you just keep an eye on this issue. And uh, once it's resolved, it should start working. But yeah, it's like, it's, it's a bit quirky. Um, Beyond that, it's actually very straightforward. So once again, to maintain the process that, you know, you can run it locally and it will load the local files. And if you package it, it will actually run the bundled files. I did this uh, node environment uh, if, so basically if we say the node environment is testing, it will actually lo load the local files. And it's if it's anything else, it will load the distributed package. And whenever we start the app, we actually export the node environment test. And the same goes for testing, obviously. So it's sort of, we can still do our NPM start and see our app running in development mode, and then we can bundle it and distribute it without any additional actions. Um, that's it for packaging. The next um, episode will be on auto updating and all that kind of stuff. I think that's gonna be the last one because I don't remember, I don't think there's any other topics left to cover. Unless you have something in mind, then do let me know in the comments. So I'm planning to do the live stream about auto updates uh, sometime next week, and then we'll have the video in two weeks. And after that, we can move on to the next series. So uh, yeah, as usual, feel free to ask questions in the comments. Um, like if you like the video, dislike if you don't like it and leave me a comment why. Feel free to join our Discord server and uh, ask questions if you have any you know, complicated ones you cannot ask in the comments, we'll be happy to help. And as usual, I see you next time. Bye.